What is going on everyone? My name is Jeremy Daly and today we're gonna to be looking at how to get that film look and how to do it right in Lightroom. Let's get started. We just got back from an awesome shoot. We had a lot of fun with Mike and Melissa. We had the sunset just going behind us and we had a lot of soft light so there wasn't any direct light hitting them and it was very beautiful and it's kind of the last hour after the sun goes down. So we're in Lightroom right now and it's an awesome photo of these two right in the center. Now the first thing that we're going to do is scroll down to the S curve and click to edit point curve. So what we're going to be doing is actually boosting the exposure of the very darks of the image. This is known as washing out the blacks essentially. So what we're going to do is bring up the blacks. And now you can see that it's a low contrast image and there's not a lot of big extreme between highlights and shadows. And then what we're going to do with the highlights is bring down the highlights a little bit, bring the exposure down of the highlights just like that. So already now, now it's kind of a fair exposure. Uh, there's no extreme highlights, no extreme shadows, and it's a great place to start to get towards that film look that we're going for. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is start playing with the exposure. Now I personally like to kind of overexpose my images a little bit. I don't like it to be too dark, but definitely the moody look is awesome to play with too. So definitely edit your film photo to how you want it to be for your style. Now I like to bring down the highlights a little bit and then you can go for, I would not suggest doing what most people normally do, is bring down the highlights all the way and shadows all the way because the dynamic range on film cameras is not the best. Um, you can use, usually just expose for the highlights and then the shadows are a lot more darker or just expose for the shadows and the highlights are too bright. Is we're gonna make kind of the, the highlights a little brighter and then we're gonna bring down the shadows and the blacks and I'm gonna bring down the contrast a little bit um, within that. And then what's really gonna help us out, it's going back to the S-curve, we're gonna click that again, and then play with these again. So I'm gonna bring down the highlights a little bit. Um, so basically I want it to not look like there's a lot of contrast, but also making the blacks black. So it's, it's hard, you're trying to bring down the blacks and the shadows without it looking like there's a lot of contrast. So it's, it's a hard task to do, but uh, right now, see like that's what a contrasty look looks like. Yeah, we're trying to make it even, so that looks pretty good. The next thing that's really important when it comes to getting that film look is bringing down saturation quite a bit on different elements of your photo. Um, you can go up to the very top and bring down your saturation. And then what I like to do to contrast that is actually boost up the vibrance a little bit. Then you can see like that's kind of not a fun look, but if you bring it down quite a bit, yeah, right there is pretty adequate. Now down here, usually I like to bring down the saturation of all the specific colors myself instead of doing this. And then I can control what's saturated and desaturated. So actually right now their skin tones are not saturated enough. So the yellow and the orange saturation controls that part of the photo only. So it's kind of like selective color what we're doing right now. So right now they're too bright, but everything else is desaturated. And if I brought down the, the blue, now it's kind of like only them but uh, I definitely don't like that look. So right now I don't want the, the lake to be too blue, so we're gonna bring down their skin tones, but I want more of the skin tones to be alive, um, which is generally important. Now the next thing that we're gonna do is play with the hue of their skin tones and with the blues. So first, we're gonna look at the orange. So if I move the hue to the left all the way, their, their skin tones turn really red, which we don't want. And then if you do all the way to the right, then it's really green. So let's put it back in the center and then what I like to do is kind of just play with it until I really love the look. Um, generally, I like their skin tones to be a little more orange, a little more real is kind of like what we're going for. So between red, orange, and yellow, depending on what light situation you're in is what you want to play with to get the tones that you want out of their skin tones. Now, the next thing that you want to do is play with your luminance. I love luminance. And luminance is really important because you're playing with the brightness of your colors. So if we look at the orange, which is gonna control their skin tones, if we move the luminance of the orange down, now they're gonna to be too black and it's gonna make them look terrible. But if we move it up, it's gonna brighten their skin tones. So I love brightening up the yellow, red, and orange for all my photos, because then it just gives a consistent look. And then with the, with the blue and aqua, we're gonna bring down, um, and then I'm gonna bring up the satura saturation up a little bit for those. All right, cool, so we're almost there. Um, the next part is your split toning. Um, with the film look, usually it goes a little cold, so you can really experiment with that. I don't think we're gonna touch it too much. 
Awesome, so I added a little bit of warmth into the highlights and the shadows. Now you can play around with that if you want a cold tone to your image or a warm tone, it's definitely up to you. Now we could add sharpening, but really with film photos, you don't get rock and sharp images most of the time unless you have really fancy cameras. So I'm gonna leave my sharpening all the way down. And now the last step, the last two steps is to add lens correction, just to make that perfect. I'm gonna add actually a little bit of vignetting. I feel that's important to, um, depending on your style. I love a little bit of vignette, not a lot. So let's add a slight vignette onto the photo. All right, so the last step that's really gonna finally like seal the deal is grain. Grain is so important. Like grain's like the best part when it comes to film photos and you can really fine tune what you want. I'm gonna be giving you guys my free film pack that's gonna have this free preset and all the grains. It has everything from really subtle grain that's a very nice texture that really gives it like a really final edge to it to all the way to a very paper texture, vintage rough texture, to everything in between. So it's really nice to have everything from something that's just really tiny and has that, it's perfect. I've spent years working on this grain pack, so definitely check that out in the description below. I'm gonna go for something that's a little more aggressive. And, uh, and then you can play it through exposure at the end of it. And then, yeah, I think we really nailed the look. Um, I'm really happy with how this photo turned out if I'm going for that film look. Um, it's not perfectly exposed. It's not that light airy look, but it's not too dark and moody. It's something realistic that a film camera would actually be able to produce, which I think is really important when it comes to actually trying to get that look. I'm gonna actually give this whole preset that we just worked on together in the description, as well as the grain pack for you guys. So you guys can actually put this on your photos. And this is what it looks like when you put it on other photos. So this is straight out of the camera, the next photo. And now if we put that out of the grain preset on, and then, so now that we introduced greens in the background. It actually handled it really well. If anything, the greens are a little too saturated. So if we go to the saturation of the greens and bring it down just a tad, awesome. Now I'm in love. I'm gonna make that the preset now because that looks better for the greens. And then if you look through this one, this is the, the raw photo. And then if we put that, now we're gonna put the preset on it. And then we can just change the exposure a little bit. I'm gonna make this one a little overexposed as if we overexposed it in camera, so that looks great. There's nothing too saturated, nothing too crazy about it. Now here's another beautiful one from another shoot. Had an awesome time with these two. We're gonna put that filter on it that we created together. And then it has the perfect amount of grain here. I really love that the dress is not too saturated too because that can really come off as, oh, that, that was a real camera type of look. And we're gonna look at this photo here. Now this one's out in a field. Now this one's really awesome because it has a contrast of green to blue to them in the middle. So we're gonna put the filter on, expose it a little more proper. What I love about photos like this is the grain that goes over top of the sky and the clouds. You can really tell the texture that it has. It's more evident with these type of photos. So I love being able to see that. Now the next photo they're running down here, I'm gonna put the filter on, bring down the exposure a little bit. And then I'm gonna straighten it out because we don't want those trees or anything in the background. So they're kind of like running through. So it's nothing too crazy sharp. You can definitely add your own taste onto it. You can download the preset for free. And then if you wanna add sharpening, if you don't wanna wash out your shadows, if you wanna make it more contrasty, if you wanna make it more moody, definitely do you. But it's a great start. It's a great place to start getting the photos. So this is it. This is raw again. We'll put that filter on. Oh, that one's probably gonna, yep, that one's gonna straighten it. Gonna reset the crop, beautiful, put it there. And it's nothing too serious. Like um, if you had it as a theme, again, this is a uh, straight out of camera, put that on. The white balance was too cold, so I'm just gonna warm it up a little bit. Um, perfect, and then we'll just raise. So yeah, that definitely t feels, for me, I've shot a lot of photos on film and this looks pretty realistic to what I've captured on these film cameras before. Um, you definitely don't want to kill your shadows. So that one, we'll reset this. That was edited before. We will put the preset on. Awesome. That looks good. If anything, I feel like we need to desaturate a little bit. Bring up the fibrins. So not every, depending on your lighting situation, you might have to change things. So we'll reset that photo. Put the preset on. Boom, looks good. And then easily, if you put it on black and white, 
Um, everything will look pretty good. You might just want to adjust your highlights a little bit and your shadows to make it pop a little more. Uh, and then, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this free preset. It's taken me a while to be able to get to that film look, but I really wanted to show you guys how I got to that preset. And then I'm going to give you that preset below so you can get a quick guide to doing that so you don't have to follow along. And then, yeah, guys, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. Let me know if you want to see more preset videos like this. I have a lot more coming down the road. And be sure to sign up for that email list because I'm going to be offering a lot more free products before my preset launch. Now that's awesome because you're gonna get free presets before everyone else gets to see it and you're gonna be part of the beta group that's gonna be able to test out this new thing I'm working on that's gonna be huge. So definitely check that out, preset, preset below. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Boom, all right, I'm gonna go drink some more coffee even though it's like 9.30 p.m. Have a great night, guys. Cheers.